So I'm just going to walk around this garden here and we're going to see what's going on. I'm curious. Um, this has just really exploded into growth in the last few weeks. Um, this uh, Makuna bean, which is the, the one without the irritating hairs, there's, there's a couple of forms of it. As, um, <clears throat> you definitely want the white seeded one, large white seeded, because the other one's just murderous. It has these fine little silica hairs on its seed pods. You don't want to touch those. Anyway, this one's just going nuts. So the question for me is, how long do I leave it? Um, the sorghum is poking its way up through the top. Um, some might have been left behind, some weaklings. And then this guinea grass, that's, that's powering through as well. That's a little bit more shade tolerant, so that's actually not going to suffer as much. But what I'm really trying to do is um, create the humidity and shade. See this, um, there's this cooch under here. You can see that, yeah, this on Cynodon dactylons, river cooch. And see how it's growing really tall? <clears throat> well, I want it to collapse. But it's actually going to take a few weeks of shading um, before this bean will kill it. And if it can kill it, then I don't have to, I don't have to dig it out. Or if I do, it's just going to be like a scrape with it with a hoe, which is, which is fantastic news for me. Um, <clears throat> and then, um, you know, this actually produces a whole lot of carbon as well. Not as much as grasses, but, um, you know, if you let it grow through to the end of the season and cut it just when it starts to flower, that's going to be abundant. Um, these bananas, they're doing well. I don't actually know what variety they are. Actually, they're just... I found one clump and then divided them all off that. So we've got... Um, I think there's one over there. Yeah, they are. banana, 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 banana. It's like six or seven of six or seven along here. So that's going to give us a good feed. Maybe uh, <clears throat> if you know what they are, just let me know. This is quite a distinctive leaf pattern. You don't see that in many bananas, so that might give it away. And um, it's kind of dwarf as well. Like I, you know, the clump I got it off. The tallest one was was no more than a meter and a half. Um, see in here, this is like this is the mess basically. Um, but it's a bit of a self-limiting mess. That's the one thing I like about this this cooch, this stuff here. It basically gets this tall and no taller, and it will it'll go rank just like this. It'll go rank, and it'll kind of fall over itself, and that stops it from growing anymore. Um, now that means you're not getting any productivity, but you also it's there's no other weeds. You know, it's just it's it's. Um, it's under control. So what I can come through now is cut this and then lay that down on itself. And that's another thing, like any shading inhibits it. So um, yeah, by cutting it and laying on itself, that will actually, they'll get rid of it. And the proof is all this area here, because this is all, this is all like that. Um, and I've basically used mowing and, and self mulching to get rid of it all. Uh, in here you've got, along the edges here, this is the guinea grass. And then in the center, it's sorghum. Now from this, from this distance, they pretty much look the same. Um, but one is very sun loving, the other one is shade tolerant. So the one in the middle, that will be, that's just going to be an annual or a biennial. And it will be replaced by um, this banner grass over here. I'll, I'll get back to that. So yeah, this is a, this is a strip here, um, which is not for like, production trees. This is just for like the odd berry tree, bit of passion fruit, but mainly this is for biomass. So I've got um, eucalyptus grandis, got some guinea grass, got some mulberries, got some uh, capri figs, which is the male fig. We've got um, a bit of banner grass. Got uh, I, I put in this lemon myrtle because I had nowhere else to put it. It's not looking very happy on that branch. Um, so this this soil up here is very poor. It doesn't get any irrigation at all. There's no watering here and there's no feeding. This is just natural. You know, whatever whatever rain comes down, whatever washes down the hill, from about this point here, it becomes viable to actually grow stuff. And then here, well, not yet. I'm going to need a huge input of organic matter in order to fix this. Um, but you've got like, so you've got like a future tree row there. There's actually some mango and some longan in there just hanging on. Then you've got this biomass row here down the middle, which eventually will become a crop row once, once these actually improve the soil a bit more. And then we've got a grass row through here, which is cooch with, that has been cut short and then seeded with sorghum. And then there's, you know, just some, 
so you get these like layers of experiments and stuff and you know while things sort of are coming together in the beginning like if I had to do this again or when I do do this again I will um well I'll know what I'm doing so I'll just do it right the first time um you anyway, this is the banner grass that I put in I probably should have put it in I don't know closer together but I thought what I'll do is I'll I'll just get this going and then I might just put some eucalyptus or some acacia in the middle something something lower um, yeah, there's pumpkins just going nuts so as long as you know it doesn't strangle my trees I just kind of you know if it gets in the way I'll just lift it up and move it into the right position um, citrus lemon balm there's eucalyptus there a bit of um, what do I say bleeding heart tree um, yeah, and there's kiwi berry, dragon fruit, more citrus, poplars, red of a grass, castor bean, all sorts of stuff in here. This is one of the first rows that I did. So I've just been like, it's a bit of a placeholder sometimes. I just, I don't have anywhere to put something and I figure if it sits in a pot and I get it, I get it some dry weather, it's going to die. So I just chuck it in and then observe it. Um, and what I'm seeing is, you know, you start to see the combinations of plants that work well together. So I find that like, you know, like cassava is high strata um, and pumpkin is only medium. So normally you'd be like high and low and, you know, it's, but they work because the height difference is enough. And, you know, I think that they, they can be used in, in some sort of a combination together. Um, this one will take longer, this one. See up here, if there's no, if we don't get frost here, this will actually live through the winter. Um, just the same as this chilcayote um this one here this is looking a bit sad because i think i cut one of its stems <laughs> it's flowering anyway this is like a vegetable squash quite a different flower to a regular one anyway this is the second year it grew all the way through winter it didn't stop growing at all um, as long as it doesn't get hit, get hit by a direct frost it um it'll just keep going but yeah you need to like i actually don't... this plant annoys me a bit because it's, a, it's too vigorous um, I wouldn't call it like a weed or anything, but it just, it's not in the right position. It needs to be given its own space, um, because it will smother other things out. So yeah, this is the sorghum. Um, this is ready for another cut. It's already been cut once. Um, what I'm hoping is, I cleared this of, of weeds before. There are some weeds coming up here, but nothing, nothing serious. And, um, I'm going to come through here shortly. I just wanted to wait until it's high enough. Um, now it's what about a meter and a half tall so yeah time to just take it all off at ground level and then we're going to lay all the mulch here um, alongside these chilies here and yeah, this lantana is going to get chopped again this banner uh, canna will get chopped again uh, and then all that mulch will get tucked under under the um, under here so I'm going to step through the garden bed a bit Try not to shred all my seedlings so I can show you these chilies. This is just chockers. Ooh. Yeah, this capsicum ginance. And see, this one looks like it got stung. No, it just fell off. Is that stung by a fruit fly? I'm not sure I've got a fruit fly trap here. Um, not too many coming in, but um, still, you know, they still get past. Anyway, there's some in here. I'm not sure what these are, but they're very hot. I mean, my neighbour made some, some chilli sauce and it's, um, it's got a very lingering burn. <laughs> very tasty though. Ah, so here's some fruit fly damage. I just come through and pull these off. See? That's, um, that's definitely stung. So what we'll do is we'll just put that in, a, um, in this pot for a minute. And take it with us. And then I put them into a bucket of water and that will that will drown them that's the best way to get rid of them um, these are all this is just like a mix of hybrids of chilies um, I don't actually know what these are called these are actually all from the same seed batch so you can sort of see that yeah you know, like those two are very similar this one's very similar again but a little bit more round and, and small um, and then there's this one just like you know the black sheep Yeah, that one. Different. Tasty though. 
Now, most people probably say these are very hot. For me, they're like, yeah, they're okay. Yeah, they're hot. Um, but we eat them. Like, we don't, we're not scared of them or anything. There's a couple of chilies around this, this garden that I am scared of. Um, so if you ever visit, yeah, don't just eat any chili. That's half an hour to the hospital. We'll get you there. And so these are... Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice one. I'm going to pick all these and I'm going to ferment them. And these are what get me through the winter. You know, be able to taste the summer. You know, put these on my food. It's really, um... I love it. I love it. I can't wait until until spring comes around. Um, here's a bit of a wild area. I'm really not trying here. I've just kind of put in a bit of guinea grass, just left the weeds grow, let the tobacco bush grow, um, and every time it tries to flower, or it's just, you know, looking big enough, I'll just, I'll, I'll chop it like that and let it grow again. Um, and there's some eucalyptus in here. There's some, also some uh, lily pillies. So I think that's Sazygium, I think it's a Coolamon, I think that one. It's called Coolamon. Um, there's some, um, what's this one here called? Brown Currajong. So these are like basically rainforest, that's a rainforest pioneer. And I've got a few rainforest pioneers through here. We've got um, the Bleeding Heart and um, Tremor and a few other things. I just got them from the Eastern Forest Nursery. And then we've got plenty of these Eucalyptus Grandis, which are... I'd say this is getting close to eight months old. Yeah, eight months from a seedling I put in here. And these will eventually be, this is dragon fruit still in a pot, but um, when this gets big enough and I start topping it, um, I'm going to be having this particular variety of dragon fruit will be propagated and then grown all along here. And so each row is its own type of dragon fruit. Uh, makes it easy for me later to keep track of. And, um, yeah, I've got the details on the name of that one somewhere. <laughs> I've got a few unknowns. That might be one of the unknowns. But at least it's, an, it's a known unknown. It's a, it's a dragon fruit that I, I know where it came from. I just don't know what it is. So when I do figure that out, that'll be great. Uh, turmeric. Turmeric avocado. That's a Wurtz avocado. Turmeric. We've got some ricotta, the tree chili. Goldfinger banana, papaya, um, what else is in here? Wompy, and uh, a few other things. Davidson plum, uh, this has fallen over. Good oh. Alright, so that's a goldfinger banana, and that's a um, Davidson plum, which was gifted to me. That was lovely. I want to get some more of these. Actually, I would like to have Davidson plum all the way through here um, because it made it through winter. And that's what matters. If you can make it through winter, just go for it. Maybe, maybe you know, it won't get through every winter, but it will for now. Same as this guy here. This is a um, candle nut. Didn't think it would make it. Made it. Um, we also have, over here, we had some uh, green, green sapote, which I grew from seed. Um, try and point that out. There we go. That one. See, didn't think that would make it either. Doing fine. So it's sort of under the shade of this very large white chatoot mulberry so it's doing fine African African yam white yam um, you know this time of year I just want everything to grow because I'm getting so much biomass um, nothing's flowering yet you know nothing's so giving me a signal that it's time to you know really time to cut um, camphor laurel that was here before what I do is I, I let that grow and I'll let it get up to whatever height I want it to be, and then I cut it back again, and it regrows. And I put that mulch next to the fruit trees. This is an avocado, which is not looking so good. A reed avocado, it had a bit of a dieback problem uh, due to this, um, there's one with one insect. It keeps on bothering my fruit trees here. It's called a bottle pig. Never heard of it before. Never seen it. Anyway, it loves to chew the bark off trees. It's a bugger of a thing. More bananas. Got so many bananas here. And, uh, yeah, we'll have to check out one of the other areas. 